In this video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade or simply swap out the hard drives on your G750JX. Now, similar models might be the same. I know the G74SX, I have a separate video on that, and that is a little bit different than this one. What I do like is they moved the battery right here, because I often take my battery out since I use my laptop as a desktop replacement for video editing. So you'll need to go ahead and just pop that battery out of there. Nice size battery and uh, under here you'll just take this and you'll get it out somehow some way my stubs card will come in handy here all right and then there's just one little screw i do wish they still had it like the g74sx which just had a little thumb screw but they changed it so now we just unscrew this one right here and then there you go, it doesn't come out. It does just doesn't come out. And to get this up, which is a kind of a pain in the butt and why we have our card here, is we're just going to simply find a little lift. I sort of made one, and then you just work your way around. I don't pull up on this because if I was to tear that out, I don't know if I would be able to put it back in. So just work your way around the edges here. As you can see, it is a little bit of a pain, but you can do it. Now, the model that, if you have the DB71, uh, yeah, the DB71, you get a SSD right here and you get a HDD right here. Now, for some reason, when you run Intel Rapid Storage Technology and you look at it, this is SD0 and this is like S. S04 or whatever. So what I did was I just basically took them and swapped them around. I made this the SSD, the boot drive, and I made this the second hard drive. Like I said, one more time, this is normally the SSD. This is normally the HDD. And what, since I, since when you boot Linux and you back up restore and you go in Intel rapid storage technology and you look at your drives, it, to me, they almost seem like they come backwards from the factory. So I put the SSD, the boot drive right here, and I put the hard drive right here. Now we're gonna go ahead and unscrew this right here. Now don't worry, there's actually only three screws on mine. I just remember there's one right here, one right here, one right here, and there's not one right there. Same goes with that one, there's not one right here. So just remember, there's no two screws right here on these two. All right, here we go. Now you just kind of slide this over, and you lift up, and there you go. It is out of there, and this would normally be the uh, HDD, the one terabyte 5,400 RPM drive, and you would just take these screws right here. And if you notice, I don't know why, but like there's an L and an R, and it it gives you like diff like you can put the, I guess it just depends on whether your SSD is different or not, or your hard drive, but there's two different screw locations. Or maybe it's for like if your drive's a little bit longer. Yeah, okay. So like this drive right here, if you can see it, now it's in there like it normally should be. There's nothing hanging off. And you've got the right one and the right one. You could actually do that and have it a little bit out that way and then have the L and the L. So that's pretty cool. I guess that's for like if you have a bigger drive or something. But you'll want to remember the way you took that out so it goes in like such the smaller pins facing that way and the bigger ones facing this way so you'll need to take your new drive um, and you'll just need to match it up like this as you can see that's the small and that's the big so we'll just do that and then when you put that in there you take your four screws you put them all in there and then you take it and you slide it in there like such and then you take your three screws and you put them right here, right here, and right here. And it's the same exact thing with this one. And to swap them out, you can't actually just take, um, hold on. You can't actually just take this and go like this. Uh, you can't. So if you want to make the boot drive the right one and the storage the left one, you'll need to actually take the drives out of their little in case enclosure and swap those around. It's not hard at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my 
SSD back in there because I'm going to keep using this SSD. I did a video on it a long time ago. It's still a very good drive. SSD life shows that it's still got like, like, <laughs> till like the year 2000 and it's a long time. Now I actually use a program called Clonezilla to make clones of my drives. I don't know why that's a little bit bent it looks like, but I actually make clones of my hard drives and then I restore them on other drives. Like I could take my 120 gig, clone it, and then restore it on there or vice versa, whatever I wanted to do. But sometimes that gets a little bit tricky, especially when you're trying to clone a bigger drive to a smaller drive. It's not as hard cloning a smaller drive to a bigger drive because when you clone it, it's going to, you know, say that you have only 120 gigs of, you know, when you actually have a 480 gig. So you can actually expand that and make it bigger. But when you're going from a bigger SSD to a smaller one, you will need to, uh, first off, delete any files that are really big. If you have any video files or something that's huge and taking up a lot of space, you'll want to take that and you'll want to move it over to an external hard drive before you make a backup. And then you'll want to backup your hard drive as a, or your SSD as a, like a, not like a whole image, but partitions to an image and then restore it. It's a little bit of a pain and I always end up running the Windows 7 or Windows 8 uh, like recovery helper thing that fixes it. I don't know why that's not going down right, but I always run that and then it lets me boot my computer up and it works fine. Alternatively, what you can use if you wanna start completely from scratch, there's a tool you can download called Asus Back Tracker. I will have a link to that in the description. If I forget, please comment and chew me out. But basically, before you swap your hard drives out, before you'll want to download and install this program, and then you'll put in a 16 gig flash drive, and then it will take that and make an, like an image of, it'll take your recovery image and basically copy it over to the flash drive. So if you, upgrade to an SSD and you want to start completely from scratch, ASUS Backtracker, you just plug in your you, the USB drive that ASUS Backtracker created. Uh, and when I create mine, I actually take that flash drive and I stick it in my box that, that my laptop came in. That way I know where it's at and if my hard drive ever gets corrupted and I don't have a backup or if I want to just start from scratch, all I've got to do is go to my box that my laptop came in, pull that flash drive out of there, plug it in here, boot from the flash drive and then restore windows. So it's really, really cool. And I highly, highly recommend doing it when you first get your computer. That way, if something ever happens, you can have a recovery part. So this part's where you upgrade the RAM. There's actually four slots in here. As you can see, there's a Samsung stick right here and there's another Samsung stick below that. Only two of those slots are accessible. What you have to do is you actually have to take off all these screws and then whatever's hidden in here and whatever may be underneath here. And you need to pull this entire back off of this thing. And when you pull the entire back off, then you'll have, um, since this will no longer be in the way, this all this right here, you will actually be able to pop those sticks out. And these are eight gigs each. So do the math. Eight gigs, eight gigs, eight gigs, eight gigs. Yeah. You're dealing with 32 gigabytes of RAM. That's a lot. So the two four gig sticks that were in here, I have removed and I have placed my own RAM in here. Now this laptop uses 1600 megahertz RAM, which is Samsung. And uh, I'm, I have 1600 megahertz right here too by Corsair Vengeance. And you'll just take it in there. All right, so this is a good time to pause the video and go ahead and just talk about all of this. After doing the upgrade, I found out that this computer actually needs 1.35 volts. So the RAM is a lot more expensive than what I thought it was. You actually need DDR3L, which is low profile. It's like a low voltage memory. Uh, it's called PC3L. It's just, it's low profile memory. It's a lot more expensive. I will put a link to the RAM in the description that you need. I'm actually putting 1.5 volts in it right now, and I need to get them out of there ASAP. 
because it's the wrong type of RAM. I'll also have a link in the description to ASUS's website that talks more about what type of RAM you need and how to identify the type of RAM you have and etc. So let's get back to the video. That's a, apparently a very, very tight squeeze right there. So uh, I messed up. Just take it, place it in there nice and firm. There we go. Now when I press down, it'll lock in place. And then I can take this one, put it in there nice and seated. Push that down, locks in place. And to get it out, just simply lift the sides up. And it pops right out of there. So with this particular setup, we're rocking about 24 gigabytes of RAM. Windows 8 posts, or this laptop posts just fine with 24 gigs of RAM in there. And Windows 8 sees all 24 gigs and all 24 gigs is usable. Now, I'm getting Square Trade on this laptop. You have 30 days after you purchase a laptop to do it. So I'm gonna get Square Trade on it. And I don't know, I'm gonna have to contact Square Trade. If they say it's okay to take the back off with, and that doesn't void my warranty, then I will do that and I will make a separate video getting to those two sticks that are underneath here. That would be awesome having, you know, 8, 8, 8, 8, 32 gigs of RAM. That would be insane. So there we go. And to put this all together, you just put it in there. Snap that up, snap that up. Take that screw, twist it in there. And then take this. Push that down and then install your battery. That's it. I know the video was a little long. I just kind of wanted to explain some things to you guys and make you aware of everything and try to explain things best I can. So in the best way possible, I'm gonna turn this thing on and I'm gonna show you the RAM. There you have it. It sees 24,576 megabytes of RAM in there. And like I said, if I'm ever able to get the back off without voiding my warranty or just totally destroying this computer, I will do a separate video on how to upgrade all four sticks, how to access the two sticks that are unaccessible at the moment. So at 24 gigs, who can, who can really complain about that? I mean, 24 gigs is a pretty damn good amount. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I'd greatly appreciate it if you do that for me. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button in the bottom left. It'll notify you when I post new videos. I've got my review of this thing coming eventually. I truly love it. With wireless AC, I'm able to get 900 megabit per second transfer speed. So I'm pretty much getting one gigabit like wired. It's pretty damn impressive. For those of you that stuck around and didn't close the video out just yet, check this out. <laughs> oh man, same exact computer. I just, uh, yeah, it's the same exact thing. That's it, I'm out.